I think because of the way I was brought up, the whole decade was really a betrayal of my childhood, mm -hmm. of the foundation. Um, I mean, it was, it, it's probably most similar to the prodigal son story. I mean, I gave everybody the finger and I went off yeah. and slept with the, you know, the proverbial prostitutes and the like, you know, and, and wound up um, in kind of like the pig pen, but not in the, you know, not a sense of broke, but just like what a disgusting mess I've made of my life. Um, I hate myself. I'm, I'm not honest. Uh, I do coke at 4 a.m. Like, I remember once, um, I remember this very vivid moment where I was, uh, it was noon, and I was still up, and I looked out, we, we were partying, you know, from the night before, I was in Soho on Houston Street, and I look out of the window, and people are going to lunch, like in <laughs> suits. And, you know, we'd been up from the night before, and it just felt so disgusting, like so unhealthy. Um, and... You know, so I, I, there was just this, like, I don't know, like I was almost being eaten away by my own selfishness and uh, hedonism. So this, this moment in Punta de Lesta, I think, was a great moment because it didn't get any better than that. I think I needed that glimpse of this is how it plays out. Because we were with richer people, with, you know, uh, I just realized that there would never be enough. There would never be enough girls. There would never be enough money. There would never be enough parties. Someone would always be richer, would always have a nicer house, would always have a nicer car, would have a plane um, or a nicer plane if I ever got there. And it was this endless pursuit of more, but the more was just pure selfishness. It was only what we could do for ourselves. And, you know, my parents had been praying for 10 years. They had been um, really constant in my life and uh, they had little old ladies at the church, like wearing, um, you know, holes in the carpet with their knees for <laughs> many years. And my dad had sent this uh, this book of kind of deep theology down on this trip with me, and I I never read anything he sent me, but I did. It was called the Pursuit of God, and uh, I think I remember reading it hungover, and I was reading the exact opposite of my life. Yeah. So. You know, he, it was it was a book written about the pursuit of holiness and integrity and virtue and uh, understanding God and knowing God. And, I mean, it, there was just something about the extremity, I think, yeah. of this that I wanted it. I mean, I wanted that. And, yeah. and that would have been coming home because I had that growing up. So I come back to New York and I'm just kind of bummed now because... I feel guilty about living with my girlfriend and I feel guilty about doing drugs and I feel guilty about... Um, I hate all the church words, but you know it was um, something had really changed. I mean, there was a there was a, a shift in conviction, um, and I just kind of struggled and I flailed for five or six months, really, and then finally had this moment where I said, "I'm out of here." Yeah. I rented a car, I drove north uh, aimlessly. I drove through Vermont and Connecticut, and I was talking to God, I was drinking, I was reading the Bible. I mean, it was all very, very kind of... A lot at once, yeah. A lot at once, a lot at once. The Bible and the bottle of doers yeah. and the pack of cigarettes. And I wound up in, in Maine uh, at an internet, a dial-up internet cafe on Moosehead Lake. And I remember that's where I filled out the applications and yeah. said, I'm going to go. I'm going to give a year of the 10 and see where that takes me. Yeah. Um, and it took me you know, on this incredible journey. Um, and I also, you know, I really quit everything. I, I felt like I would have to, I would have to give up all the vices in one fell swoop to fully live out the new story for my life. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, I kind of felt, again, this is a churchy word, but like there would be, if I did it in a messy way, there would be grace for that, but I would only be hurting myself. Like it would be much easier to just make a clean break and never smoke again and never touch drugs again and yeah. never look at porn again and just like swear off everything in one go yeah. and kind of allow myself to step into mm -hmm. this new and then it was just it was amazing and I was with these um, unbelievable Christian doctors who were living out their faith in the most authentic way yeah. you know Dr. Gary was a plastic surgeon in California like the dude could be in Maldives you know vacationing at the Four Seasons with his family yeah. he's given now 30 years. Uh, so it was inspiring to be with those people, and I wanted to be like them.